The thing about a king cobra is when it hunts, they will go up to a snake, they will bite down, and they will not let go. They have amazing jaw pressure. Let's see, she's already growling at me. She is nowhere near as content as Kevin when it comes to being handled. Oh, ooh, did you see that? Look at all that venom, see that? She just bit down and oozed venom all over that python. This one loves to come out. It's got a beautiful yellow tongue too, check that out. Come on, come on. Ooh, ooh, devours, look at that. This is such a beautiful snake. and I'm looking to get some snacks for my favorite iguana, Mr. Bakes, the Utila Island Iguana. And I want to show you guys this. All along the front of my house, I actually have these hibiscus flowers growing everywhere, which is actually perfect because the spiny tail iguanas and all the, the rhinos, the, let's see, the Luvisai iguanas, all these beautiful iguana species love these flowers. So I actually have a good supply of hibiscus flowers to pick from. And I think I'll pick one of the prettiest ones right here that are blooming. We're gonna take that for Mr. Bake, see if he wants to eat it, and if not, we have a big delicious banana, because that iguana loves his bananas, and I do too. Always eat your fruits, kids. I hate bananas. Mr. Bakes, where you at, buddy? He was just out a minute ago, and he was basking. We're gonna see if he'll actually come out to eat, because ever since we moved him to this new property, he's been a little bit spooked about eating from me. He's just staring at me every time I offer him food. And uh, hopefully now he's a bit more relaxed. Now that's warmer out, he'll probably be a bit more hungry. Let me get that bottom walk off real quick. Let's see what he wants. He's right in here. He already ate his hibiscus flower on his plant. Mr. Bakes. Mr. Bakes. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna put this hibiscus flower right up here for a second. Let me close the front and see what's going on from the back. Mr. Bakes, what are you doing? Mr. Bakes. Oh, it's okay. You want a banana? Oh, he does. He does. Oh, come look. He just took a little bite. He's in this box right here. He's just being a little shy right now. But that's his little hide box for at night, and there's hay in there. So if it ever does drop to low 70s or even low 60s, he can actually handle that so he can actually live in the box at night. But once it goes below 60, that's a very unnatural temperature for them to try and endure because out on the Utila Island, it never drops below 60 degrees. So we got to make sure he doesn't ever get too cold because we wouldn't want to lose this critically endangered iguana. Let me see if I can get him to come out and eat some more. I don't think he's, uh, he's too fond of the camera just about yet. So let me push his hay to the side. I'm gonna close this box up, I'll put the banana up here, and then hopefully we can look forward to a future episode where we get a hand feed him. Because I'm telling you, before we left the Everglades Outpost, he was nice and comfortable, he was eating out of my hands. It was really cool to have that relationship with him. But right now, he's just a little bit spooked. Let's see, we got some uh, tortoise chow right here. I'm gonna throw some water on it. Tortoise chow is actually great for these iguanas, especially when they come out of a cold snap. You let that tortoise chow Fill up with water, get nice and mushy, and it's fantastic for them to hydrate. We're gonna put that banana up there as well. So he has a little bit of a buffet to pick from, tortoise chow, hibiscus, and a banana. Let's get this all locked up and secure. And then today we're gonna be feeding somebody that you guys love. You know him, you love him. Let me hear his name! Let me hear his name! Come on, kid! Come on, kid! Michael Phelps! No, Kevin! 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 Who said that? Anyways, we're gonna be feeding Kevin the King Cobra and Justina the King Cobra, and then some miscellaneous vipers that I've got that you guys don't get to see too often, like with my eyelash vipers. Ooh, they are the spiciest little Nicaraguan vipers. Ooh, so tropical, they make me want to dance, they make me want to get down. Ooh, ooh my ankle's still sprained, let's not do that. All right, I'm gonna lock this enclosure, make sure it's nice and secure, and I'll, oh, Barra, what's up? With special guest, Barra. What's going on, Barra? What's going on, Barra? You're gonna distract me from work. You're gonna distract me from work, huh? Get out of here. Get off the set! Get off the set! Anyway, so let's get this enclosure <laughs> nice and secure and locked and secure. Bear, don't bite her. Come here. I'm gonna feed you to the King Cobra. Alright beautiful 
people. We're in here in the Serpentarium, and as you can see from one of the last episodes, we're filled up. We got every wall full of animals. We've got our Fly River Turtle Tank. We've got all of our middle sized enclosures for all our beautiful cobras, vipers. We've got our king cobras on the side. We've got our rattlesnakes, Australian snakes, black mambas, green anacondas, crocodilians, and lizards. And this is just the beginning. This is just kind of getting settled because obviously this is not the finished masterpiece eventually this will be all drywall there's gonna be a nice ac unit in here and it's gonna be very beautiful we're actually gonna be doing all the enclosures the small ones on the sides big fish tank on the back wall and then obviously back here we reserve this space for the king cobras the 15 foot deep walk-in king cobra enclosure so you guys can enjoy seeing these animals stretch out and doing what they do naturally out in the wild it's very exciting stuff speaking of king cobras we gotta feed these beauties. So they haven't eaten in probably like two, three weeks because we had to do a move. We had to make sure they're not going to the bathroom in the bags. So it's time to give them what they deserve, a nice big treat. So right here, if you guys aren't familiar with these king cobras and how they eat in the wild, king cobras are famously known to eat other reptiles, specifically snakes. Their scientific name, Ophiophagus hannah, that partially translates to snake eater. And one of the snakes they love to eat are Burmese pythons found in Southeast Asia. King cobras are found in India and throughout Asia and Southeast Asia. So their environment overlaps and this is one of their favorite foods out in the wild. Besides this, they actually like to eat reticulated pythons, which are the world's longest snake. They like to eat rat snakes, red tail racers, and even monitor lizards. Their venom will overpower a monitor lizard. They'll go through that thick armored hide, they'll pierce it, inject them with the venom. They're overpowered by the venom and the king cobra will swallow up something like a five six foot long monitor lizard that is badass so you're probably wondering where did I get these pythons well as you guys know famously in the Florida Everglades we have Burmese pythons out here and they're invasive they don't belong here they're only from Southeast Asia naturally the way they got here is a long long time ago before there was regulations on keeping these animals these animals used to be very popular in the pet trade about 30 40 years ago because you know you could tame them down for the most part, they'd be a laid back snake and they can get like 18 feet long, a massive python that's impressive to show off to your buddies. Whether or not you have zoological experience, people could buy these animals like nothing. You get a little baby at the pet shop, next thing you know in 10 years you have a monster 14 foot python. So now these pythons are actually banned. They're not allowed to be sold in the pet trade here in Florida. The only way you could own a live Burmese python is if you're somebody like me, an educator, you own a zoological facility and you use it all for education. There's no more breeding and selling them for the pet trade, which in my opinion, it's probably best Back in the day, it was real crazy. It was cowboy days. Everyone had a pet tiger. Everyone had a big python. Somebody had something crazy because that's just how Miami, Florida was. But nowadays, we have rules implied. Uh, we have to have permits for these animals. So it's a real big benefit for somebody like me that keeps king cobras because these guys just love to eat Burmese pythons. So I have local python hunters like Kevin. This guy right here, he'll come and donate these pythons frozen thawed. I'll have them stacked up in the freezer, good to go. And now I have food all year round for my king cobras. It's real good for me. It's not good for the environment, but at least I can help with getting rid of the carcasses. And I see Kevin is getting really excited because I know he's super hungry. So let's get him fed, let's not tease him. This python is probably about seven feet long. The biggest python that Kevin ever ate was actually about eight foot two inches. I'm never gonna feed him something that big again. Uh, but this python should be fine. It's not too thick and it's just about seven feet long. So let's put this python down. I'm gonna unlock this enclosure and feed this big boy. As you can see, he's getting excited. He's looking around. You know, just because this animal cannot speak to us doesn't mean it's not intelligent. This animal is very intelligent. He knows when it's feeding time. He can tell, he can taste it in the air, he can visually see. Even if I don't have the python in the room, it's like he knows, he can sense the vibes in the air. They're very intuitive animals. I love king cobras. They are truly my favorite snakes on the planet. Let's see how Kevin is today. Ooh, that is a big, big python. Come on, Kevin. Hey, buddy. Look, right there for you. Ooh, come on. You're gonna bite it? Come on. Come on. Go ahead. He's like, that's a big python, dude. You gonna take it? Come on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Come on. You gonna be shy? You wanna bite it? Give it a bite. Let it know who's boss. The thing about a king cobra is when it hunts, they will go up to a snake, they will bite down, and they will not let go. They have amazing jaw pressure. They have incredible muscles around their head, so they'll grab something like a radiated rat snake 
or a red tail racer. They'll chomp down, crush it with that jaw force, inject it with the venom, and then they'll start death rolling to make sure that animal is disorientated, it's confused, the venom takes over, the animal dies, and they make a meal of that beautiful snake. We're gonna leave that python right in there. I'm gonna close this up so it's nice and safe. There we go, it looks like he's gonna bite down onto it now. No, no, don't look at me, look at the python. <laughs> You're such a pretty boy. I cannot wait to see him in a walking enclosure, stretched out, climbing around, because part of their scientific name does mean up in the trees as well. So they are a highly arboreal animal. They will be found up in bamboo stilts when they're babies, and even when they're 15 feet long, they will find themselves up in trees, in the caverns of trees. Let's leave him alone for a little bit so we can start chowing down on that python, and let's get ready to feed Justina, the female king cobra. See how she's drastically a different color? She is an Indonesian king cobra, whereas Kevin is a Malaysian king cobra. So different countries, different localities, different colorations to adapt to that environment so they have really good camouflage. So let me get this python out, get ready to give Justina her meal. This is another good sized python. Woo, look at that. That is a thicken. She'll be able to take that down no problem as well. She's probably about a 13 foot king cobra. Let's see, she's already growling at me. She is nowhere near as content as Kevin when it comes to being handled and worked around. She is very defensive. Relax, it's okay. There you go. Oh, ooh, did you see that? Look at all that venom. See that? She just bit down and oozed venom all over that python. She does not mess around. She will never, oh, another good bite right there. She will never give a dry bite. If that snake bit you, it's gonna be a lot of venom. Uh, but then again, that's food. She knows it's food and she does want to make sure it's dead so she can eat it. All right, locked and secure, we're good to go. She's growling, she's upset. We're gonna take a step back from these king cobras, let them start to chow down. Maybe I'll start feeding some of the vipers and we'll get back to them once they're starting to eat. All right guys, right here we have our Waggler's Pit Viper and she's just hanging up right at the top. Looking all pretty and whatnot. We're gonna give her like a little wrap up, nothing too crazy, nothing too big. She's gonna love it. She hasn't had a meal in about two weeks. You ready? It's delicious. Ooh, it's delicious. Ooh, come on. Bam, look at that. This is such a beautiful viper. So this is the Waggler's Viper, also known as a temple viper because they actually are worshiped in temples in Malaysia and in Thailand. And in those temples, they actually have these bamboo stilts, little podiums, and they're full of these Waggler's Pit Vipers. So you can walk in, you can admire these snakes, and if you're crazy enough, uh, some of the people at the temple will give you a non-venomous python to hold while they actually take a Waggler's Pit Viper, which sometimes are reluctant to bite, and they'll put it on your head. So you have a Pit Viper on your head, but you're safely holding a non-venomous python. So you can actually Google photos like that, and they're, they're on the internet of people like in America or in other countries visiting Thailand and Malaysia, and they actually get these vipers put onto their head for their tourist photos. Look at this. Already starting to chow down. Looking good. I love this animal. We're definitely gonna be doing a remodel of the enclosure, making it more of a creek habitat with more water flowing through, so it creates better humidity, making it easier to shed for this animal. So incredible to watch a king cobra devour a whole entire python. Even though I've seen this a ton, it never ceased to impress me. This is the ultimate sight, the king of all snakes devouring one of the biggest constrictors on the planet. But you know what's even cooler than this? Seeing king cobras out in the wild doing their own thing. The King Cobra Conservancy, this group I've got on my shirt, goes day in and day out tracking wild king cobras that have trackers in them. And the, oh, relax Kevin, and the way they put the trackers in the king cobra is they get call outs to villages that have king cobras inside their home or on top of their house in the shingles or in their chicken coop. And these snakes are actually going and looking for the Indian cobras, the Russell's vipers, the crates, all these different snakes going in for the rats. So the snakes are going in for the rats, these king cobras are going in for the snakes. So they actually are good to have around, even if you don't like venomous snakes, this guy will come in and actually eat your venomous snakes. 
But what happens is, these venomous snakes end up in people's homes, the natives will actually call the King Cobra Conservancy out to catch the King Cobra, and now they have a test subject for tracking, and they'll actually surgically put in a transmitter so they can track these King Cobras out in the wild day in, day out for years. They found out so many interesting things about these animals, not just about courtship, not just about hunting, but just what they do day in and day out. Where do they sleep? How long do they sleep? How often do they eat? There's so many important things they've learned. And it's just amazing to see that these king cobras climb up into trees 20, 30 feet up in the air, hunt vipers, bite down onto them, let them go, go down to the ground, and then wait for the viper to drop down from the tree so they can eat it. Ooh, look at that. So they don't only protect the snakes, but they also protect the people in the native lands of these animals. So in India, for example, a lot of people, and still a lot of people today in villages will kill king cobras when they see them. They'll get a shovel, start whacking them and killing them, or they'll try and get the king cobra themselves being an amateur snake handler, and then they get bit, and then more drama comes to the name of the king cobra when it's not even the snake's fault. It's just people putting themselves in a bad situation they're not ready for. So these people from the King Cobra Conservancy go out, they remove the King Cobra, they bag it up safely, and then they educate the whole community. They hand out pamphlets, they hand out flashlights so people can see where they step at night and they don't get bit by snakes. They do everything they can to help with the animals, help with the people, and just overall protect the kingdom of the King Cobra. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Look at that. Just devouring that big thick python like it's nothing. Look at her, look at her eyes are dying. She's like, what do you guys want, huh? Such an amazing sight to see. So the King Cobra Conservancy gets to see this out in the wild of India, Thailand, Nepal, uh, and they're trying to open up a new one in the Philippines. And the way that they can do this, the only way that they can do this is with funding. This is a non-for-profit organization that just dedicates their time to these beautiful animals. So what I'm asking you guys is if you have $5, if you have $10, if you just want to get a t-shirt or a hat and support the King Cobra Conservancy, you can go to this website right here and there's a link below and you guys can help support King Cobras in the wild. You guys can become conservationists yourselves. Even if you can't get out of your home, wherever you are in the world, you can't get out to India and get hands down with these King Cobras and, and this group and help them out, you can just simply help them out by buying a cap, buying a shirt, that simply gives them enough support so they can do what they need to do in these native countries. So definitely check out the King Cobra Conservancy. I've donated myself, I hope you guys will donate, buy some shirts, support the kings in the wild, support the kingdom. Uh, I got some more snakes to feed, I'll see you guys in a bit. I like to go shicky boom, shicky boom, bum bum ba da 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 Alright guys, so we're going to be feeding my Nicaraguan eyelash vipers. I love these snakes, not just because they're eyelash vipers and they're beautiful, but where they come from. I have these eyelash vipers from Nicaragua, and I also have a fur glance we'll see in a second from Nicaragua. And why that's so cool is because most of my time in Costa Rica was spent right near the border of Nicaragua. So the localities of vipers that I own right now are very similar to the ones I would catch in the wild. So it's nice to reminisce, look at my collection, go, ah, I remember hanging out in Costa Rica going, ah, oh, fur glance, fur glance! So, Good times, good times. Uh, my other eyelash vipers in here, I have two other ones besides the gold one, and they are Christmas phase, so that means they're all camo colored. They do not like to eat rat pinks or mouse pinks, they only like to eat little anole lizards, so I'm only gonna be feeding this golden eyelash viper right now. You ready? This one loves to come out. It's got a beautiful yellow tongue too, check that out. Come on, come on. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, devours, look at that. This is such a beautiful snake. And if you think these colors are beautiful, check out some of the shots of the eyelash vipers we're finding in Costa Rica, like this one, or this one, or even this one. See, this species is what's called polymorphic. So if I have a yellow one, and then I have a green one, and then they have babies, it doesn't mean they're gonna have yellow and green babies. They could have silver babies, they could have orange babies, they could have red and yellow babies. There's so many different color combinations. That's what's called polymorphic. You never know what you're gonna get when they produce babies. When you work with polymorphic species, it's just a never-ending array of coloration, and it makes working with them even more exciting than your usual batch of reptiles. Did you guys see that? The venom oozed out of the fang from the pressure of her biting down, and then the venom just went right over her eyes, down onto her head. She'll be fine, that venom will not affect her, 
but that just shows you how much venom she really is packing because we've already seen her drop a couple big doses while biting into the python initially and now she's still oozing out venom they do have one of the biggest venom yields of any venomous reps on the planet i think they're right there with the gaboon viper because the gaboon vipers when they're full grown a real big one can have a head about that big but also the king cobras can have a head about that big too so two snakes with huge sets of venom glands Guys, eyelash vipers taken care of. We got some happy vipers. We're gonna film this beautiful Yurikun rattlesnake right now. Let me get my food ready. If you can see right about here, this Yurikun is actually hanging out right behind that plant. This species is endemic to Venezuela, so it's found nowhere else on the planet but Venezuela out in the farm fields. And this snake prefers dry ground, so that's actually why this habitat, although it looks nice and moist, I just misted it. It's a pretty dry setup for the most part. Let's see if we can get this little lady to come out. What are you doing? Got some food. We got some food. Oh, here we go. Look at that snake. Look how beautiful a Yurikun rattlesnake really is. It's like cookies and cream. I've had this snake for over a year. Or, oh, look at that. For about two years. And when I first got this snake coiled up, it probably fit on a quarter or at least a half dollar. Now this snake is probably about like two feet long. And it's really cool to watch them grow because not just is it a beautiful rattlesnake, but this is my favorite species of rattlesnake on the planet. I'm sure you can see why. Second after this has to be the Eastern Diamondback rattlesnake, the world's largest species of rattlesnake. But the Yurikon, ooh, what can I say? I like cookies and cream. They're beautiful snakes. All right, guys, we're gonna try and get this big old leaf out of, out of the Yurikon's mouth, because it's really in there. Let's not hurt his teeth. Come on. There we go. That was a little too much leaf. Now it's gonna be easier to eat. All right guys, so we've got the Tarsio Bello, the Fertilance right here, and you can see right in the corner, he's actually pretty opaque. He's looking real blue in the eyes, his colors are a bit dull. I don't know for a fact that he's gonna eat this little rat pup. But we're gonna see if this little Tarsio Bello takes a chomp. This is the viper we are just talking about that we'd find out in Costa Rica, near Arnell. Is he hungry? Oh yeah, it's interesting, look at that. Ooh! Did not give a rip that his eyes are going through. Shed, he, he's got that little bluish hue you can see, but he didn't care. He still wanted his food and he nailed it. So the friend of mine that produced this snake actually said that this snake should be roughly around five, six feet long in a year. And it's a male, so I'm looking forward to that. This species in general can actually get upwards to eight feet long. So it's a pretty big viper. And of all the vipers that live in Central and the top of South America, Tarsio Bello is most responsible for bites. Just like the Russell's Viper, just like the Indian Cobras, it's not their fault. Wrong place, wrong time. Sometimes people don't have flashlights or walking barefoot in the woods. And not surprisingly, these guys are so camouflaged that nobody sees them. You know, their job is to be cryptic. Their job is not to be seen. They're trying to hunt the frogs. They're trying to hunt the lizards, trying to get their rodents. The last thing they want to do is look real obvious and colorful like an eyelash viper. So this snake, it's doing its job being camouflaged, but nobody sees them. They step on them and then they get bit. And with a venom like that, you could lose a whole limb or your life. Their venom is extremely necrotic. So it's basically like having acid injected into your veins, traveling throughout your body, eating away at your blood cells and flesh. Not fun, not a party, not my kind of party. So anyways, let's enjoy this Tarsio Bello chowing down on that rat pup. I'll get to you guys in a second. Hey guys, it looks like Justina's just about done. This has been quite the workout for her because usually her pythons are a bit smaller, but she's managing, she's almost done. Kevin, on the other hand, he's interested, but he's in a new environment and he's getting used to being in this enclosure in this new display room. So we're gonna let him have his privacy. It looks like he's getting more and more, more interested, but it's just me he's interested in right now. So we're gonna give these king cobras their privacy. I'll see you guys outside. <laughs> All right, beautiful people, that's gonna be it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed. Definitely check out the King Cobra Conservancy, support King Cobras out in the wild, help the kingdom. And also, don't forget to check us out on chandlerswildlife.com. Get your own merchandise. Look at this, get jacked! Ooh, brother, for all you guys out there trying to work out, get your quads, get your delts, get your, uh, uh, what's this one called right here? Anyways, if you wanna get swollen jacked, you better be wearing your get jacked t-shirt. Ooh, look at that tank top. Ooh, look at that jacket. 
Ooh, look at that sticker, baby! And don't forget the Chandler's Wildlife with the Crocodile Miami style. Ooh, that's a classic. Don't forget your workout shirts. I'll see you guys on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe. Don't forget to check us out on Patreon for exclusive content, and I'll see you on the next one. I'm gonna go explore my property. I still got a lot of, a lot of woods to go look at. I'll see you on the next one. Always eat your fruits, kids.